My husband is like an instant water heater. If something even slightly bothers him, his mood turns sour immediately. My daughter and I have lived in fear of him. Hearing my daughter cry out, Mom, Mom, I finally came to my senses. I couldn't believe my husband would do such a thing to her. My name is Holly. I am a 25-year-old stay-at-home mom. I have a family of three. My husband Sean, who is 80 years older than me, and our three-year-old daughter Annie. My day starts by reporting my schedule for the day to my husband. Today, an air conditioning cleaning service is coming in the morning. After that, I'll go shopping and then pick up Annie from kindergarten. Other people might think that it's strange for a marriage couple to do this, but I don't really know what normal family is anymore. I've never known my father since I was born. My mother was a single mother who worked at night, but she was often irresponsible with men and didn't come home on many occasions. On the table, there were sweet buns and candies. On a good day, there might even be $10 left for me. My mother stopped coming home altogether when I was in the fifth grade. By that age, I knew what was going on and thought, ah, I've finally been abandoned. When I told my teacher that my mother wasn't coming home, I was taken into custody and placed in a facility. My mother was arrested and charged with a crime, but she said, that child was always in my way. Since then, I haven't seen her, and I don't plan to in the future. After graduating from high school, I got a full-time job at a nearby supermarket. The part-time ladies there treated me like a daughter, and I enjoyed my work. Excuse me, but what time will you get off work today? One day, a male customer with a slightly nervous look approached me while I was working. That man was my future husband. At the time, I was 20, and my 20-year-old husband looked very mature to me. Like me, he had grown up in a facility, and somehow, being with him made me feel at ease. When I was 21, I found out I was pregnant, and we got married. Our daughter Annie was born when I was 22. We led an ordinary happy life. However, something happened that caused my husband to gradually become strange. Sorry, Holly. I got fired from work. My husband said, looking like it was the end of the world. There had been massive layoffs at his company, and he was on the list. As my husband was feeling down, I did my best to encourage him. I'll work too, so let's do our best together. I told him, and he quietly nodded. I had quit my job when I got pregnant and became a stay-at-home mom, but when I contacted my former supermarket, I found that the same team was still there, and I decided to work part-time at the supermarket again. I also managed to enroll Annie in daycare halfway through the year. Seeing this, Sean started to complain. You're so lucky. Everything goes well for you. I can't even find a new job. Although we received unemployment benefits for a while and didn't have any financial troubles, I knew it wouldn't last forever. Looking back, I think my husband was panicking at that time. Whenever a rejection notice arrived, he got irritated. And maybe I was putting pressure on him without realizing it. But a month later, he did something outrageous. You don't have to go to work from tomorrow. My husband said when I got home from work. I didn't understand what he meant, and I was stood there frozen. He continued. I got a job. It's through a friend, but the pay is better. So you don't need to work anymore. Really? Congratulations. But I think I'll keep working part-time since I've come this far. I didn't mean any harm when I said that. I enjoyed working outside, and I knew Annie would need more money as he grew up. But my husband glared at me, slammed the door, and stormed out. 
in a matter of minute. He returned in a good mood. That night, I received a call from the manager of the supermarket where I worked. Your husband came to the store today and yelled loudly. Is it true that you wanted to quit your job? I couldn't believe what I was hearing. I told the manager that I wanted to continue working, but he said, I really appreciate that, but after seeing what happened today, I'm sorry. Some of the employees were frightened by your husband's presence. So please understand. The manager apologized several times, and I quit my job that day. After taking a bath, my husband was drinking water, and I asked, Why did you do something like that without asking me? Is it true that you caused a scene at the store? I told you I wanted to keep working. At my words, he slammed the glass he was holding down hard and said, I just told them you won't be coming from tomorrow. I didn't cause a scene. That's an exaggeration. My husband's loud noise made Annie cry. He wasn't always like this. He used to be so kind. You've been acting strange lately. I can't live with you like this. I'm gonna leave with Annie. At my words, he sighed and said, What can you do on your own? You barely have any education, and you have no home or anyone to rely on. It hurt, but what he said was true. As I cried, Annie looked at me anxiously and patted my head, saying, It's okay. It's okay. The next day, while Annie was at daycare, I went to consult with the police. I'm scared of my husband. But I hadn't been physically abused, and I didn't have any injuries or bruises. An old male police officer said to me, Things happen in married life. Try talking to your husband a little more. He didn't seem to take my concerns seriously. As I walked along, thinking that this was how the world was. An older woman approached me. Hello, Annie's mom. Are you alone today? She's Sally, who lived in the house across from our apartment. She lived alone in a big house. Annie was very fond of her and called her grandma to play with her. When I apologized, she said, I'm happy to be called that, so it's fine. She was a cheerful person. My husband had a good public face, so she said he was a wonderful husband. But he said to her, That lady is a bit too friendly. It's better not to get too close. Since then, I had been letting Annie play with her when my husband was not around. Recently, my husband had been unemployed and always at home, so it had been a long time since I talked to her. My husband is at work, and Annie is at daycare, so I'm alone today. She looked at my forced smile and said, Oh, is that so? Then, would you mind accompanying me for a while? She forcefully took my hand and invited me into her home. Her garden was filled with colorful flowers, like a flower field. It was so beautiful that I unconsciously shed tears. I love flowers and enjoy having tea in the garden like this. But it's lonely when I'm alone. Today is nice because you are here. What's your name? Holly. I answered and she said, What a lovely name. From that day on, I became Holly instead of Annie's mom. When I returned home, my husband was already there and I unconsciously trembled. I told you not to get along with that old lady, didn't I? Why don't you understand? He kept asking me, and I was too scared to speak. I could only say, Please, divorce me. Fine. But leave Annie. What can you, an unemployed person, do? Where would you live? How do you plan on eating? You can't handle all yourself, can you? I'll support you and Annie from now on. Isn't that good enough? With that, he smiled kindly like he used to and hugged me tightly. 
I was so ignorant and foolish at that time. I should have run away. But I couldn't move, fearing that he would find me and do something to Annie. Since that day, I was constantly under his surveillance. From now on, report your plans for the day. And if you meet someone, make sure to let me know. Got it? Where had the husband I loved gone? Even our young daughter seemed to understand, and she stopped leaving my sight, even though she had been a daddy's girl. He didn't seem to like that either, saying, Come on, Annie. Let's play with daddy. But when she shook her head, he accused me. You're telling her something bad about me, aren't you? It was hell. But I had no one to rely on. I hated my weak self. I thought I was a failure as a mother. Since John found a new job, he had been earning quite well, and we were able to live comfortably. I heard he worked for a staffing agency, but the irregular working hours made me suspicious. Was he doing something shady? I began to think so. About three months passed in this hellish life, when a decisive event occurred that would end it. That day, he was in an unusually good mood, to the point of being creepy. Even Nanny seemed happy, going to him on her own. It was a scene no different from the happy times we once had. If only those days could continue. But it was too late now. While I was preparing dinner, my cheerful husband said, Holly, I'll give Annie a bath today. Annie, let's take a bath together with Daddy today. Yay! She was so happy because she loved her kind Daddy. Recently, he had been saying it was a hassle to give her a bath, and I have been giving her a bath most of the time. But I gratefully accepted his offer. I would regret this decision for the rest of my life. It was about five minutes after the two headed to the bathroom when I heard Annie's screams, which were far from normal. I quickly stopped what I was doing and ran to the bathroom. Annie? <gasps> there was no sign of the two in the bathroom. Panicking, I rushed outside. There, in a parking lot, stood my husband, Annie, and an unfamiliar man. Upon seeing me, Annie clung to me crying. She must have been terrified. She was shaking. What's going on? I glared at my husband, who looked a bit uncomfortable. The man standing next to him then said, Nice to meet you. I'm Kevin, Sean's friend. Your husband is currently working at my company. I felt nauseous at the man's creepy, smirking smile. Is that so? And what do you want with my precious daughter? My hands were trembling as I hugged my frightened daughter. In response, she hugged me tightly. Then, my husband said something unthinkable. Listen, all we want is for Annie to be a conversation partner for some rich old men and women for a while. I told you I was working in a staffing agency, right? It's just that. And it pays a couple hundred dollars. It's a pretty good deal, right? You're always chatting with the bored-looking lady across the street. It's the same thing. He said he had taken her outside, intending to tell me afterwards, thinking I would object. What? What did he just say? What does he think of her daughter? A conversation partner? No way! I finally woke up to the reality. I marched up to my husband and slapped him. You've got to be kidding. How could you do such a thing to your own daughter? Are you out of your mind? Disgusting. Don't touch Annie. Stay away from us. My crying and screaming caused my husband and his friends to look panicked and tell me to be quiet. Kevin, my husband's friend said, Is your wife crazy or something? I'm going home. That's when it happened. Excuse us. May we have a moment of your time? 
two police officers were standing there. Seeing the officers, my husband and Kevin's faces turned pale in an instant. We received multiple reports of arguing voices. Tell us what happened. When I realized Annie wasn't in the bathroom, I thought it wasn't an ordinary situation and I called the police while running down the stairs of the apartment. The two men started to resist, shouting. We didn't do anything. Let's go. As the police officers calmly listened, they were taken to the police station. A female police officer who came to help later asked if I was okay, as my body was shaking so much that she worried about me. When asked if I had any family members I could rely on, I could only shake my head. Then, from behind, Sally, who lived across the street, called out, Holly? Honey? Annie, who had been clinging to me, hugged her, exclaiming, Grandma? After the female police officer and Sally talked for a bit, Sally kindly invited us to her house. My tears wouldn't stop at her kindness. Seeing me like that, Annie said, Mommy is crying again. There, there, and patted my head. I hugged her and said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Thank you for comforting me. And managed a small smile. She happily said, I love you, Mommy. After that, my husband Kevin and several other employees were arrested. It turned out that the company Kevin was running had a fake location, and while they claimed to be a staffing agency, their actual business was providing escort services. Among them were illegal immigrants and minors. It seemed that Kevin knowingly employed them. Moreover, my husband and his associates were involved in nationwide wire fraud, affecting a significant number of victims. I was questioned by the police, but they determined I had no involvement and let me return to my daughter. I left Annie with Sally and went to visit my husband in prison. Divorce me, I said, looking straight into his eyes. All I wanted was to support my family. I always wanted you to stay at home. I thought we needed money for that. I was afraid you guys would suddenly disappear. My husband had the same past as me. His mother also left him one day and never returned. Still, he was completely misguided in his love for his family. I could not continue living with him any longer. He would be in prison for some time. After crying in front of me for a while, he said, Please take care of Annie. And agreed to the divorce. I heard that after his release, he would work with relatives on his father's side and lived far away in another state. I haven't seen my ex-husband since that day. Since then, Annie and I have been living in Sally's house. Annie seems happy to live with her beloved Sally and smiles every day. After Annie went to sleep that night, Sani and I talked while looking at the flower garden in the backyard. You know, I lost my husband to an illness a few years ago. I was so sad. We didn't have any children, so it was hard being alone. But the people in this area are so kind. They encouraged me a lot. How about for you? I couldn't stop my tears at her words. Not only her, but when I quit my job and told the nursery school that Annie would be leaving, the teachers were concerned about my pale complexion and even suggested transferring her to kindergarten. The owner of Sally's favorite flower shop and his son gave us a bouquet of flowers, saying, Put this up in your house, if you would like. And the son, Mark, gave Annie candy, saying, Here, eat this. Even when I went shopping at my former workplace's supermarket, as a customer, 
The manager and part-time aunties ran up to me and said, "You are not being mistreated by your husband, are you? You can always rely on us." The people who reported the situation to the police that day were our neighbors, including Sally, who were worried about my daughter and me. Everyone was so kind. Crying, I told Sally. I've always been told my mother not to be burdened to others, so I didn't know how to rely on people. That's why. My mother always glared at me. I have no memory of her smiling. When I was in third grade, I had a fight with a friend, and my mother was called to the school. On the way home, she told me, "Don't be a burden to me." And slapped me so hard, my cheeks swelled. Since then, I've lived my life trying to read people's faces. As I sobbed and spoke, Sally gently struck my head and listened quietly. You are only 25 years old. You still have a long life ahead of you. And you are Annie's only mother. She has no one else to rely on. It's okay to ask for help when times are tough. People can't live alone. With tears in my eyes, I replied, "Yes, thank you." After that, I started working at Sally's favorite flower shop. The owner had lost his wife early, and raised his son Mark on his own. Mark and I were the same age. After working there for several years, Sally said, "So, Mark." When are you going to confess your feelings to Holly? You'd better hurry, or someone else will snatch her away. I went to all this trouble, as if to interrupt Sally's rumbling words. Mark, with a bright red face, said, w- "Wait a minute! Don't say that, Sally." That's when I found out that he had been interested in me since I was married to my ex-husband. A few years later, when I turned thirty, Mark and I got married. Annie, now a grade schooler, was also very happy. At that time, my daughter and I had moved out of Sally's house and were living on our own. But of course, we invited Sally to the wedding. At eighty years old. She was still strong and healthy, and wholeheartedly celebrated my marriage to Mark. I'm surrounded by so many kind people. That day, I resolved to never forget the gratitude I owe to others, and to become a strong mother who would make my child proud. I wonder if I've grown a little since then. My daughter said. Congratulations on your wedding, Mom. I'm happy to be your daughter. Thank you for everything. And hugged me tightly. From now on, I pledged in my heart to protect my precious family.